Well, it's Pastor David, and I'm here with my Thursday at 3 update, and I have the privilege today of being with Alex Glover. He is our Director of Traditional Worship. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, Pastor David. Happy to be here. Well, Alex, I am so appreciative of you. You are just really blessing. I mean, I use that word. I don't like to use it a lot, but I really mean it. You have really blessed us with uh, your ministry and your talent and gifts and the way that you have just you know, come in after Michael, who was such a wonderful part of the family, is still, you know, on the organ, but you've just raised us to new heights, and I'm just really grateful for you. Thank you. Happy to happy to be a part of the family. Super. Uh, so, Good Friday, we're, Good Friday is right around the corner, and that is always a really powerful service for me. It's one of my favorite services of the year, mm -hmm. and involves a lot of different elements, uh, and, you know, sound, and silence, and visual, and light, and darkness. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Good Friday service and kind of what the overall idea of the service is about. Yeah, so for this service, um, we're, we're taking the idea of, of this tenebrae, this really solemn experience, and we're this year using a piece of music that is through composed, which is a musical term that um, basically means from start to finish, there's a whole story that's happening, both musically and textually, that we're going we're gonna to visit all of the last words we're going to have narrations in between the musical parts that that speak to the different scriptures. Um, and then we're also going to have some almost theatrical elements where we're going to be removing parts from the mm -hmm. altar, different elements of the worship space um, to sort of represent all that is occurring on this Good Friday experience. So, so I understand uh, you used the phrase through piece. So this is a new new music this year. As I understand, we've done things a little differently in the past. This is something that... Uh, is really going to be kind of cool. Tell us about what a through piece is and how that works for us. Sure. Um, so in years past, what we've done is we've taken a different anthem, a different song mm -hmm. for each mm -hmm. of the last words. And that's one approach to, to a service of this kind. The other way that we can do it, like we're doing this year, is finding works that one composer has written that speaks to all of the different aspects. So right. through composed, again, being that idea that from start to finish, there's a through line. There's something that mm. is connecting all of these different sections. Mm. Um, and in this case, it's one, there's a couple of things. There's the text of the last words. So we'll get one movement right. or one song. Last words of Jesus as he's Correct. going through his passion, yeah. Yep. And then there's some musical ideas that we'll hear throughout from start to finish that mm. sort of keep coming back. Um, and what's interesting about this particular setting, the composer is Michael Myrick. And, and as you mentioned, this is a new work. So this was, mm. Um, written in 2019, published in 2019, and from what I can tell, has never been performed ever, because um, there's no recordings of it or any documentation of it, so we will mm. be the first. Um, but That's it's, cool. It, it's super cool. We're very fortunate to have that opportunity, um, but it also, on top of being through composed, it's, it's bookended with um, the Kyrie text, which is unusual. Mm. It's different for, the, for Good Friday, and the Kyrie being Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. And mm -hmm. so what sort of adds to the uniqueness of this service that we're going to really focus our intention on that need for Christ. Wow. So uh, so the, basically the music tells the story through as well, not just the story of the scripture, but the music is telling the story and it's kind of wound together. I, I think the image that comes to my head is, is the Handel's Messiah. It kind of connects this piece all the way through about the story of Christ. But it sounds really powerful. Um, so one of the things that we're doing in my Tuesday night studies, we've been talking about worship this week and about, you know, our orientation towards worship and how worship so often is what we bring. It's, it's not just about what I receive, but really what we bring to Christ and and this idea of how I find myself and what God is doing. Uh, God is at work in these group of people. God is at work in this story. How do I become available to what God is doing? Sure. Uh, so what would you suggest? I, I want to come to the service Friday. What would you suggest is a, the right way to come to that service to really uh, embrace and, and experience what is what is being laid out for us? Sure. Um, I think it being a more somber and reflective service, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for individual reflection uh, as the music is happening and the text is being presented and the different mm -hmm. orchestral elements are adding to that. Um, is an opportunity to, for self-reflection, but then there's also going to be a lot of silent time in between mm. sections as, as pieces are being removed from the altar, um, a lot of, an opportunity for us to think, 
what is what does that symbolize? What does that represent? And how does that impact me? And, mm. and all of these things that that represent Christ and and the ultimate sacrifice, um, we have to think about what we're bringing to the table. You know, we've we've been given and have received mm. the the gift of Christ and and the death, which leads into our next step, our next part of the journey of Easter. But we have to get there. We have to go through Good Friday first to get to yeah. the. You know, of resurrection oh that's such a good point you know i i don't have a resurrection if i don't have a death right so so it, it sets the table and and uh prepares me for the joy and the life of easter and so it's a, just a really and, I, and one thing i love about the service is so richly textured you know as you mentioned there's different element every piece has a, a representation or a, as a sign of something that's a critical part of the story. The story is so layered. So you have this beautiful music and you have silence and you have readings and you have people and symbols. It's, it's really a, a, a textured experience that adds real depth to sets my heart right for what God is doing in the resurrection. So I'm really grateful. So Alex, one of the things that I'm always amazed at is how effortlessly you kind of pull all this together. You seem to make it look really seamless and but I know there's a lot of pieces, far more pieces than I know that goes into even just one service, which by the way is one of like six services this week. But uh, this one service, uh, what are some of the different pieces that are involved? Here we have some very special parts to this service as well. Sure, so there's the music of course, which has different la layers to it. Um, the choir has been working on, Chancel Choir has been working on this piece since right after Christmas. So we finished Festival Gloria, we took wow. about a week off of choir and we moved right into this. And we've invited folks that don't typically sing in chancel choir um, to join us weekly to, to learn yeah. this, a little bit of a larger group. Um, there's the orchestra who are all professional musicians in Central Florida. And so they've been working on this music individually and oh they come God. together for a rehearsal with the choir right before we, we perform. There's the, the narrations and the scriptures with all the different pastors. And then we have some, our director of worship, Claude Smith, has put together um, different folks to help with mm. the removing of the elements from the altar um, to add that layer as well. So there's a lot of different moving parts, lots yeah. of hours of preparation, especially, I know, just speaking from the musical side, I, I spent countless hours over the last yeah. few months preparing the score and my thoughts of how it's going to be performed, conducted, all just, just to make it, as you said, appear effortless. <laughs> um, and what's real cool about this particular service too is um, sort of merging my worlds a little bit. One of my ensembles from school is going to be performing with us That's to awesome. add to that aspect and to that element as well. Yeah, I mean, who knew? I mean, who knew that you have this one service at the end of the week of multiple services, but you've got a big orchestra, you've got choir that's been rehearsing, you've got this new piece of music, you've got some of this drama, Claude's been working, doing a great job setting that up, and then you have an ensemble from your school, so it's really a very special service. I really hope and pray that people will, will come and be a part of this. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned from your school, and I see you're in your office. Uh, tell us a little bit about your other, you know, church leadership, just a part of your life and ministry. Tell us a little bit about the leadership you do at school. Sure. Um, so I'm the course teacher at Edgewater High School, and I have on our seven period day, I actually teach eight classes, wow. uh, seven of which are different vocal ensembles that range mm. in, in ability level and style. And then I also teach advanced placement music theory for the students that want to know a little bit more about what happens inside of music. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. Um, it's just part of my day to day. <laughs> Well, it's been such a gift to us to be able to benefit from that as well. Now, and all of that, I mean, do you have time for fun? What do you do for fun? What what happens? Tell us about Alex. What does Alex do in his free time? Well, the free time is few and far between because on top of school and church, I'm also enrolled in graduate school online. So I'm wow. studying to get my master's in music education and taking coursework on that for that throughout wow. all the extra time as well. Um, but beyond that, when there is yeah. some spare moments here and there, my husband, Mason, and I, we love to hang out at our pool backyard. We have a big backyard and four dogs. So we like to four. spend as much time, yeah. Four. Yeah. <laughs> as much time as we can just relaxing outside and by the pool and, and trying to enjoy some, some calmness amidst all of the chaos. <laughs> 
Well, Alex, that's wonderful. I, I'm I just thank you for who you are and for your leadership in our church family and being part of the team. And thank you for your work on this service. It's going to be a great service, seven o'clock on Friday. Good Friday. It will bless you if you come and will help uh, will help set up your Easter. Thank you, Alex, for all of that. Yes, and thanks of for being with us today. Thank you. I appreciate it.